Hey, everybody. It is a very special edition of the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, and joining me today, uh, we have the plenary speakers for our, our Who Am I conference in Concordia, Wisconsin, in Mequon. We have with us Flame and Pastor Jeff Ware. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yes, Great to be here. Great to be here. <laughs> So uh, conference is coming June 25th to 28th. We're taking over Mech One. We cannot wait to talk about uh, Christian identity. Who am I? Uh, and, and it's a super important question this day and age, I, I think for a myriad of reasons. But I, I'd love to kind of get both of your thoughts on the, the matter. What does is, what is Christianity have to do with, with your identity? Flame, take it for me. Yeah, I love that because, you know, especially I just remember coming up as a kid and really defining myself up against other people. And uh, maybe just like popular ideas from music, from film, and just random conversation. And you're sort of trying to gauge who you are, how you should dress, what you should think, and how you should process based upon sort of the temperament of the environment and the mood in the room. But Christianity does the hard and heavy lifting for us in that God who created us, he owns us, he cares for us, he loves us, he established good and beautiful things for us as humans so that we can get the most out of life. And then he says that in Christ, for your ultimate problem, I've dealt with that. So there's forgiveness of sins that informs you of what it means to be a person. If you're a male, a female, a parent, a son, a student, whatever. So God has already established those things. Now you can have fun. Now you can enjoy life <laughs> within the boundaries he set and uh, just makes it a lot more pleasant. And yeah, so I want to go with God's good idea. So that's what Christianity does for us. <laughs> Pastor, yeah, I think, think you, <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, we've been kind of told a story, right, by, by the world that, uh, that we kind of came from, from nothing, right, that the, the only the material world exists, that we evolved from, uh, you know, apes or whatever it might be. And, uh, and so everything is just kind of random and meaningless and, and, and pointless. And I got to find my identity in, in something whether that's my, you know, my sports fandom or my uh, musical tastes or my uh, how I dress or whatever it might be, uh, we don't have a solid grounding for our identity. And so what Christianity offers is a word from God, a word from God about that. The one who created us, the one who made us, uh, who can tell us really at the core who we are. And, uh, and, and so we don't have to go on this like never ending hamster wheel of trying to find ourselves or to discover ourselves or whatever it might be. We've got a, a word from God and a word from the God who uh, went to the cross for us, a word that we can trust, um, as well. Not just this authoritarian kind of, right. You know, uh, I am God and, 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 and this is what, it, this is what it is, right. It says, I'm the God who went to the cross for you. And I can trust you that. spoke God's word on who I am. Yeah, the, the two words you spoke here, the hamster wheel, where there's just always more, and the cross, where Jesus actually speaks very fine. It is finished words. The The idea of enough actually matters a lot when we're chasing our own identity down. Um, that this idea that that if you're looking inside of yourself, you're, you're always going to be looking for more. There's always going to be more to do. There's always more to prove. There's always more to be. But if it's coming from that cross, it, it's it's an outside of self uh, identity that, that's super, super important. Uh, flame, it yeah. seems appropriate. What is an outside of your self identity self? Sound like where do you find that? Could somebody write a book for me? <laughs> Man, it's so funny because so when I first heard about this sort of concept of looking outside of myself, um, some like to use the Latin phrase extra nos, but for me it was so helpful because there's sort of this this cycle you get stuck in when you're always looking within, and I, it's tricky because because of this old Adam in us or this sinful nature, there's this energy that is sort of, it's sort of weird because you get into wanting to prove that you're a good person, wanting to make and affirm within yourself that you're doing good. And then not only is that a thing that you feel from within, but then it's even rewarded out in the world. So that's how we live our lives. It's like, if you do good at school, you get the good grade. If you do good on your job, you get the money. You earn your money. You earn your paycheck. So life reinforces that you should always be performing and outperforming other people and doing your best job to feel good about yourself. But in inside of the spiritual realm or, you know, the Christian narrative, 
it just does not work. And in fact, God says, if you're trying to live looking within and, you know, sort of navel gazing, as some people say, then actually you're resisting me. You're resisting grace and forgiveness, and you're trying to earn your way into heaven based on your own goodness. So that sort of concept is flipped upside down in Christianity where it says you have to relax and you have to receive. You have to have an open hand and the humility to trust in what Jesus has accomplished for us. And in that way, there's so much more peace and it informs you as to how to move out into the world from that point. So it's like, man, if I just trust and look outside to what Jesus accomplished for me, I see that he lived the perfect life that I could not live, right? Then he dies on a cross for the things that I love, that he hates, that breaks his heart. And not only does he die for our sin, but he raises in three days, just establishing the truth of who he is and demonstrating what God was really getting at when he created human beings. And with that all being in the person of Christ, it's like, well, I should look to him because I can't pull that off and uh, I need him. So it's just, man, it's a game changer. And for me, it just, it drove me to wanting to serve people, wanting to give my gifts and talents away to others and not just living with this sort of self-centered, me-centered focus and uh, sort of being obsessed with my own things. But now I can just give myself to other people, not perfectly, but doing the best I can with the best of my own abilities, my even my own limitations. And I can rest in that Jesus has those things covered. Like even my good works, my good deeds are washed in Jesus's righteousness so I can I can trust through and through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as long as, you're na- as long as you're navel gazing, you're never able to, you're always, you know, you're trying to work out who you are or trying to work out yourself. You're never looking out to Jesus or out to the neighbor. Um, as long so as true. we're consumed with that way, we're, we're, we're never going to be secure in our salvation. We're never going to be uh, able to love and serve our neighbors the way that we were called to do as Christians. So yeah, yeah. I really yeah. appreciate that. So true, man. So in, in this place, like I, I can say, I, I believe in Jesus, but then when I, when I keep falling into the same sin again, when, when I, I want to be a different person, when I want to be a more better witness, and you can do this from a negative view from, from sort of I, I, sexual identities that are so challenging in this day and age to, to simply just wanting to be a better neighbor, a better witness of Christ. Um, if all I'm going to do is sort of look at my faith, I start to, to wrestle with the idea of my trusting in my faith or in, in my Lord. So, so God gives us the gift of baptism. He, he again, works from the outside in. But but talk a little bit, you guys, about uh, how baptism actually gives gives not only strength but but security and comfort uh, when we start to wrestle with an identity when our works keep failing. Mm. I I think you I think right part. there is the forgiveness of sins. You know, I mean, this is what this is what this the greatest uh, gift that is given in baptism is the forg- forgiveness of our sins. And so, uh, you know, we can. I, I think you know one of the greatest insights that Luther had. It was to not speak about I was baptized, but I am baptized, right? That this is not something that happened to me in the past and it's over and it's done with, right? I am baptized. I am forgiven. I am God's child. I do belong to him. Um, and I think there's a you know, tie in there with that conference theme of engraved in the palm of my hand. This is like this sense of permanency, right? I'm, uh, <laughs> I belong to God and not even my sin can can you know, and my struggles can take me out of the palm of his hand. Uh, he holds on to me and he keeps loving me and he keeps forgiving me. And so I don't have to wallow in the guilt and the shame and, and uh, get stuck in this, 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 this place where, uh, you know, I, I, I can't get out of my own head. I can't get out of my guilt. I can't get out of my shame. I can't get, uh, serve anybody else, uh, love anybody else because I, I'm just a terrible person. Right. Um, I can say I'm baptized, I'm forgiven, and I can start that new day and say I'm going to go out again, and I'm going to I'm going to strive to love and serve my neighbor. And if I, of course, I'm going to mess that up, but I'm going to be forgiven. I, mean, I am forgiven. I am God's child. Ooh, I love that. If I could say something too, it it was so helpful for me because I came from a tradition that took piety very seriously or just uh, spiritual growth being spiritually mature, the spiritual disciplines, prayer, fasting, Bible reading, things of that sort. So I came from a tradition that was in some ways healthily, but in other ways, hyper-focused 
on, you know, this sort of upward climb, upward, you know, sort of striving towards heaven. And, you know, some good things came from that in terms of I really wanted to align my life, my morality, my practices with my identity in Christ. So amen to that. But it gets tricky when you are still living in this sinful flesh and you're wrestling with that sort of, you know, disintegration within yourself, your own hypocrisy, your own contradictions. And the fear is, if I'm not performing up to par, then am I even saved? Am I even a Christian? So with the focus being on me and my sort of progress in the faith, then, you know, the goal becomes damaging because it's almost like, do I have a God who understands the dash in between your birth date and your death date? Like, can he really get into the thick with me, into the mud and understand how complex this is? So for me, it was so healthy to learn more about ancient Christianity as preserved through confessional Lutheran thought because it helped me see that Jesus has already framed Christianity in such a way where he understands that the entire life will be one of repentance. So that means that I will always need him for forgiveness. So I'll daily be dying to sin and being raised to newness of life, which is something that he does. So it's not something that I do, but obviously with my members, I'm actively participating through the power of his spirit, but I'm safe. So as I'm struggling through, I know I'm covered. I'm watermarked, if you will, in my baptism. I'm being held and God loves me. And I love that first Peter three, 20 and 21, where it says that in our baptism, yes, God saves, but he also gives us a good conscience. So it's like, man, even though I'm struggling through, I can rest even in my conscience, in my heart, in my mind, however you want to think about it. But that allows me to be the sort of broken version of myself, knowing that God is over time tweaking me and patiently, you know, working with me and in me. And ultimately he's doing the work himself. So I'm, I'm really just resting in, in my baptism. And uh, so that was a game changer for me. I was like, you know what? I think Christianity is a good thing. Cause I was questioning that. And uh, he really undergirded me with his word. So I'm thankful for, for this tradition and, and, and the word of God in general. <laughs> I love that. So um, I, I really want to grab onto something you just said there and, and maybe kick it back to both of you. Uh, but the idea of, of sort of a Christianity that diminishes our identity in, in a way that makes us want to get rid of the Christianity instead of our identity is, is a temptation that I think sooner or later almost anybody has to struggle with when Christianity keeps calling you a sinner. So um, when when both of you were asked to to define identity, you went to chiefly to the works of Christ and, and not the works of, of, of yourself. Uh, when can Christianity be almost used as a weapon against your identity instead of a bolster for it? And, and, and what does God give us to actually address it the right way? Mm, that's a good question. I think if, if Christianity becomes a moral improvement program, that's when it's a threat to the soul, to the person, because then it also is just one among many other moral improvement programs. So it sort of loses that, um, that, that's that authority, if you will, because it's like, Oh, I can take yoga. I can join this religion. I can just be a good humanist in the world to become a better person. And, you know, so if Christianity is just that, it loses its significance. It just becomes one among many things. And, uh, and, and then if I'm finding it to not work, it's like, man, I'm applying these principles, but I don't seem to be getting better, smarter, richer, more attractive, then why don't I find a, a superior program that can get me to that end? And uh, so a lot of people hit that space, especially if it's some type of vice or moral struggle, and they keep hitting that wall like, man, I took this class, I read this book, I tried these Christian principles to overcome this, and it didn't work, and then people just tap out. So if Christianity is not centered on Jesus's finished work for us, then uh, it, it has no power. And I love how we are called to look outside of ourselves to Jesus's completed work and his spirit delivering those gifts to us through word and sacrament. So I'm always looking to him. And uh, so that's a game changer. I mean, my goodness, I think that's relevant for Christians and non-Christians. When, when, Christian, when Christians go down that road, I think they, that what they're preaching ceases really to be Christianity, right? I mean, 
Apostle mm-hmm. Paul said, I resolved to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified, right? This, this has got to be the central message. And I think sometimes, you know, I see Christians and Christian preachers uh, sort of treat the gospel like it's just for for people who are not converted, right? So so we're going to preach the gospel, tell you, and then you get saved, right? And then after that, it's all about moral improvement, life change, uh, living your best life now, whatever it might be. And so then you've lost, if you, you stop talking, they stop talking about the cross. They stop talking about forgiveness. They stop talking about uh, grace, uh, unless it's the grace you need to help you along in your, your life of good works, right? Um, that, that is when it, when it starts to go astray and ceases to really be the core of what Christ has given us. Uh, in his gospel. Absolutely. That's good. So uh, this summer, we I'm, I'm so excited. We we can't get to, we can't wait to get hundreds and hundreds of kids together so that we can talk about this identity thing. You, you guys are both going to get to share the stage to, to teach plenary for a couple hours a piece. What's one thing you, you're just really excited to talk about this summer when we get to conference? Mm, man, so many things. <laughs> I think... Uh, <laughs> No, I, I think for me, one of the most exciting things is to sort of connect the dots between this conversation and in the the contradictions or points of connection within culture. So I think for the most part, all of us are tapped into and plugged into social media and current events. And sometimes we don't think about sort of filtering the things that we let into our minds through our Christian worldview. So we'll know the truth on paper, but we may not know how to use it when we get out into these various scenarios. And, you know, well, this performer said this about God and this, you know, super influential person said this about sexuality, identity, and they're really cool. They're really nice. They're actually really smart. Look at the way they TikTok videos are edited, the transitions, the lighting. Oh my goodness. And you sort of get caught up in the performative nature of what's all around you. And you may let in some unhealthy things that contradict your, you know, your Christian worldview and your identity in Christ. So I'm most excited about sort of showing what those things are and how we ought to engage them. And uh, so I think that'll be fun. I think it'd be funny. I think it'll be fun and informative. And hopefully we all just feel like family, just relating and saying, yeah, I get that too. Yeah, I, I fall there too, but thanks be to God for Christ Jesus. So yeah, that's, that makes me happy. Think about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, for me, uh, definitely the worldview questions are, are huge, right? Um, the world is, uh, the media and pop culture and everything else is giving us and feeding us and catechizing us into a particular worldview that is really uh, without hope, without beauty, without um, truth. uh, And, and uh, being able to, to relate uh, the biblical teaching. um, I I think, you know, one of the things I really want to kind of focus on too, in addition to the conversations that we've been having today about uh, about identity in Christ and baptism and so forth is to talk a little bit about our identity as God's creatures, right? Uh, first article of the creed kind of thing, right? You know, what does it mean that, that God created me and gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, reason, senses, all my members, right? All that stuff, right? What does that mean? How does that shape my identity? What does it mean that God preserves all of that, right? What does that mean that that uh, God, uh, that God uh, defends and protects me from all uh, danger and delivers me from evil and all of those sorts of things, right? We, um, and then, you know, also to talk about how uh, we can find a purpose, too, in the vocations that God has, has given to us, uh, the relationships that we have in, in, the, in the home, in the family, in the church, uh, in, you know, at school and work and, and everything else. Uh, how does God? How has God given me a holy calling, a vocation, uh, a place for me to serve and to and to and to show the love that I've received from Him to others? Uh, what a what a wonderful and beautiful picture of life that is uh, given to us in, in in these things. So I'm excited to talk about that stuff too. That's fire! Yeah. I can't wait. So uh, it's going to be Who Am I? June 25th to 28th this summer, Concordia Mequon. Uh, Flame, Pastor Ware, thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your day to to talk about this and uh, look forward to hearing you a lot more this summer. Yes, indeed. Round Great. two. <laughs> 
Let's go. 